We have another question here that says, what is the domain restriction? So what this means is where can my domain exist? Where can my X's exist? And it's a restriction. So that tells me something funky is hap happening. So I have to restrict the domain. So that allows the inverse to be a function. Well, what do we know about inverses? Inverses have symmetry with respect to y equals x, but how do we test them, right? We test them using the horizontal line test, ooh, line test, which tells me if I can run my lines across and I only hit one time, then I can create an inverse. But as you can clearly see, as I run those lines across, I'm hitting more than one point, which means it's not an inverse. But where on my domain could I draw where I would only hit an inverse? Well, this line right here, from here to here, if I draw those lines and I restrict that domain, it's only going to hit one time. Look. And again, if I draw another line right here and I draw lines like this, look how many times it's hitting only once. And I could put another domain restriction right there. And I could draw more lines. And again, we're only hitting one time. If we literally only look at that part of the graph, then that's what we call the domain restriction. So any anywhere, either from negative infinity to whatever this value is, a pro approximately negative two and a half, and then from negative two and a half to approximately positive two and a half, and then from positive two and a half to, to infinity. Any of those intervals would be a domain restriction that allows for an inverse. Okay, describe the end behavior of this function. Well, um, in order to describe end behavior, I have to recognize what's happening. And I'm going to look at the highest degree, which happens to be my first term. So my my degree is three, which tells me that it's odd. My coefficient is four, which tells me that it's positive. And remember, I had y'all memorize that little chart where you knew it was even, odd, positive, and neg negative. And I'm going to draw that little chart for you so you can recognize it because you got to have this one in your binds. Okay, so what does this match? Well, it's odd, so it's this category, and it's positive. So it should look like this. So I know that my graph looks like this. All I have to do is write the uh, end behavior, which if we're looking at limit notation, this is going to negative infinity and it equals positive or sorry, negative infinity, right? My function's going down. And on this side, as X approaches positive infinity, where does it go? It's also going to positive infinity. Sorry, I forgot my F of X right there and my F of X right here. Okay, can you write down at least one type of power function? What are our power functions? Our power functions could be x. Our power functions could be 7 because technically there's an x to the 0, which cancels out. Our power functions could be x to the 4th, x to the 100th, x to the 3,642. It doesn't matter. Any of those are, are considered a power function. What about our non-standard power functions? We talked about 2 in class for sure you should know about, which would be negative exponents and rational exponents. And what are these? These are simply our roots, our, our radicals, and these just tell me that we're flipping them. What are the greatest possible number of real zeros? So this was that video 2.2 where I simply told you that the greatest possible number of real zeros would be equal to your highest power. My highest power is 3, so that means the greatest possible number of real zeros zeros is three. Are two real zeros an acceptable answer? Yes. Is one real zero an acceptable answer? Yes. But the max number I could have received was three. The next question asks about greatest number of turning points. Again, that's video 2.2 about identi identifying parts and key features of polynomials. And this one simply told you that this was going to be your highest power minus one, or we called it n minus. One. So my highest power is still three. So the number of turning points I could totally have would be two. Okay. The height H in feet of a ball thrown into the air after t, t seconds is given by this formula. Using synthetic substitution to find the height of the ball after 0.5 seconds. So again, we could use synthetic division division, synthetic substitution, and plug that in, or sorry, the synthetic division, and use that one half, or I can recognize that this is simply a quadratic, so 
I can go ahead and plug in that one half. And that's what synthetic substitution is telling me. That really just means plug it in. So that becomes negative 16. I'm going to convert this back to one half because we're squaring it and it makes it easier to recognize what we're doing. And one half to the one half squared is the same as saying one half times one half and I multiply apply across, right? So that's one fourth. So it becomes negative 16 over four, which we know is just neg negative four plus 25 over two is 12.5 plus 5.5. Well, that becomes real easy to see. See now I can put those decimals together, right? 12.5 plus 5.5. That's going to become 13 and five. So uh, 18. So this becomes negative four plus 18. So that becomes positive 14 and whatever our uh, feet, our units. What is this solution? So again, when we solve polynomial or inequalities, it's the same as solving a polynomial, except once we get to our factored form, we have to create a sign chart. And so my sign chart gets my roots. My root here, x minus 4 equals 0 becomes positive 4. So I'm going to put a positive 4. My root here, 2x plus 6 equals 0. I'm going to minus 6, minus 6. So that becomes 2x equals negative 6. I'm going to divide by 2. And x, say negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So I have a root at negative 3. Then I'm going to test some random numbers. We're going to test negative 5, 0, and positive 5. If I plug in negative 5 here, that becomes a very large negative number plus uh, 6 it's still negative. Negative minus a negative is still negative. Plug in zero, that becomes po positive and negative, and plug in five, and that becomes positive and positive. So if we check, we know that's going to be positive. We know that's going to be negative, and we know this is going to be positive. We're done with our test, so I'm going to cross out those numbers so I don't get confused by them. And now I'm going to look for right here, what is our actual thing that we're solving for. And it says my polynomial is greater than zero. That means my polynomial is bigger than zero. What does greater than zero mean? Ooh, positive number. So I look for my positive intervals. So it's from negative infinity to negative three. Ugh, why does this hate me? Okay, so it's from negative infinity to negative three. And it's from four to positive infinity. So either of those would have been the acceptable solution set or both. Okay, given this function, how has this been transformed? So I look at the key information. What's my key information? This right here. This is key information. This is key information. And this is right here. So the negative tells me I reflected, doesn't it? But specifically where? I reflected over the x axis. I've got to get a better tablet. There we go. Okay, this minus two tells me that I shifted left or right. Well, it tells me that I actually shifted to the, sorry, you're gonna go the opposite of what you automatically assume. So I'm actually shifting to the right by two units. It doesn't mean that I'm at x equals two because we don't know the original f function. We just know we've been shifted right two units. And this plus four means that I have been shifted up four units. And finally, dealing with that actual three, that's just a, um, what do we call it, a, a vertical shift factor or an expansion factor. We could just talk about it as a shrinking or a fattening, however you kind of want to see that. Okay. Again, we have another one. It says to write the original equation of this graph. So I know that this is x squared. I couldn't write this if I didn't recognize the parent function, and the parent function is x squared. And it looks like I'm going to be joining you for one more video. It's going to be a long video today, guys.